Everybody, I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, we thank you today. We worship you. Thank you for the greater one, the Holy Spirit of God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, your word says. And we believe it. And we thank you for it. We, we take that. And we give you praise and we honor you and we glorify the mighty name of Jesus for the greater one is our teacher, our leader and guide. And we put ourselves in your, your wonderful guiding hands today. In Jesus' name. Ha ha. Amen. Glory be to God. Welcome to, the, welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's go back to Romans chapter 4 once again. We've been, we talked all last week, we're talking this week about faith calls things that be not as though they were. When, when you call things that are the way they are, waiting for them to change, there's nothing to cause the change. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a spiritual force that comes out of the born-again believer's spirit, or as the Bible calls, your heart. It's not talking about your blood pump. It's talking about your heart, the core is what it's referring to. It's like the, the heart of a tree, um, the, the heart of a matter, it's the core of it. The very life center is in your spirit. Praise God. That's what got born again. Now then, Romans 4, 16, Therefore it is of faith, so that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise, the covenant, might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him, or as the cross reference says, and as we've noted, like him, so before him or in his presence, like God, who quickeneth the dead and calls those things that be not as though they were. Well, Brother Copeland, I, I mean, are we supposed to do this like God? Oh, oh yeah. Let, let me take you over here to the book of, don't lose your place there. We'll come back and finish reading that. I want you to see this in, in the book of Ephesians. In the fifth chapter, chapter, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. The word translated follower there is the word that we get our English word mimic or to, to impersonate, mimic, do like, talk like, act like. Now, see, be therefore imitators. That's what the word really means. Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children imitate their parents. Amen. And people, religion, you know, religion is a, has brainwashed so many people instead of being biblically taught that, whoa, you know, you can't, can't act like God. Why, that Copeland running around and just trying to act like a little Jesus. Oh, you noticed, yes. I do my very best every day to act like him, talk like him, think like him, do whatever he does exactly the way he does it. Amen. When you act like Jesus and you talk like Jesus and you think like Jesus, you get Jesus' results. Amen. You see that? And that's what Abraham is doing here in the presence of God, just like God, who's his teacher. God taught him how to talk. God taught him how to think. God taught him what to do. And he had a blood covenant with God that in covenant relationship, he had a place with God that gave him certain covenant rights and one of his rights is to speak the very words that God spoke 
and like God called things that be not as though they were. And he got the same results that God got. How? Why? Because it was the same Holy Spirit that brought it to pass. Amen. Now, yesterday, well, let's finish reading this. As it is written, I've made thee the father of many nations before him whom he um, believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now, yesterday, <laughs> let's go over to the 11th chapter of Luke. In yesterday's broadcast, I began talking about receiving the Holy Spirit. And we read this scripture, the 11th chapter of Luke's gospel, 13 first. If you then being evil, or if you been being a natural person, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more <laughs> shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Now, I, and I related the story about how Gloria and I received back in 1963. Um, we were married in April of 62, and we got born again. Gloria got born again in, in uh, October, and I got born again in, in first week of November of 62, six months after we were married. And, uh, and then uh, we went to a, 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 a meeting, and during the, the meeting, um, Dr. Bill uh, <laughs> Reed is conducting the, the services, a good friend of ours, and he gave an invitation for, to come and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm a, like I so told you yesterday, I, I'm absolute scripturally illiterate. I didn't know that was in the Bible. I, and, oh, I'm, I had probably, I, I remember when I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John just a short few days before, I thought, I came out and said, Gloria, did you know they all told the same story? I mean, that, that's how, you know, anyway. So I turned around to my mother and I said, is that something you ought to have? She said, you ought to have that. Well, my goodness, I, whatever I could get from Jesus, I'm going to get, and I'm in a hurry to get it because I like to went to hell by, by running from God. Boy, I'm running to him now. So I jumped and ran up there, and so did Gloria. And <clears throat> she's over here with all the women, and they're praying over here. And they're, all the men are praying over here. See, then none of them knew what we're talking about here either. They, they didn't understand it. <clears throat> so, you know, and, and, and I, I mean it literally. Some of the men were saying, hang on, brother. Hang in there. Hang on. Somebody else said, let go, brother. Let go. I thought, hang on to what? Let go of what? I, I, I don't have a clue. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And so I just kind of stood there and waiting for something to happen. And, um, and, and of course, you know, the... the, the the presence of God was there, obvious. And so, that, you know, nothing happened to me. So finally they gave up on me. <laughs> and Brother Bill came, uh, Dr. Bill came over there, and I'm standing there, you know, like I'd seen my dad stand in the Baptist church for all those years. He's a deacon in, in the church. He, and that deacon stance, you know, that's what. And I stood there while they're praying for Gloria. And Dr. Bill said, put your hands on Gloria. I said, no. I never lay hands on anybody, brother not in church, you know. And so he said, lay your hand on Gloria. I said, no. He said, put your hand on her. And I did it for a thought. Oh, oh, glory, glory, glory be to God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh. And I just walked over and sat down in a chair and I was just sitting there. Oh, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. And uh, Dr. Bill walked over there and touched me on the head and said, no more English. Oh, well, well, Gloria didn't receive it the next morning, but I had to leave that night and go back to Little Rock because I had to go to work the next morning. So I got in the airplane. I'm flying back to Little Rock in this bright winter, January, clear and cold night, just gorgeous. You could just see for miles. 
And I'm sitting there with the autopilot on and I'm saying, uh-huh, okay. Um, yeah, well, okay, yeah, what about this? And I, I thought, well, I'm going to do this again. <clears throat> and if there's anything to it, why, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, yeah, okay. And here it came again. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, it, it, I mean, it is just like a gusher rolling up out of me. Glory to God. And I'm just worshiping God. And I'm just saying, whoa. And I, I began to see the lights of Little Rock up there ahead. And I'm thinking, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to call approach control here in a minute. What am I going to do? See, I, 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 brother, I want to impress you with the fact, because this is the point of what I'm, where, where I'm going with this. I didn't have any scripture to base anything I was doing on. And I just said, Lord, you're going to have to do something with this. I hope it comes out in English. If it doesn't, you have to fix their ears. I said, but I'm going to little rock approach. Okay. <laughs> See, I didn't know, I didn't know, I did not know that the, that, that the Holy Spirit would ever, ever, he would never, ever cause me to be out of control. That's the devil that does that kind of stuff. All that foaming at the mouth and all that. I landed, jumped out of that airplane, and I'm telling you, I'm dancing around that tarmac and around in front, out in front of the hangar where I work. I, I, I mean, man, I am having myself a praise party. I am all over that ramp. I still don't have a clue what, what all this is about now. Well, yeah, Brother Copeland, and, and, and that's what I'm looking for. If I get them kind of feelings, I know I got the Holy Ghost. I was hoping you'd think that because I could have had that worth no feeling. I could have had that, and God would have been equally or more pleased with it than the way I received it. But, of course, he, he absolutely knew I didn't have any word. A faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I, I didn't have any faith to, I, I didn't know how to use my faith in the first place. I, I, I didn't know I had any in there. I had to learn all of this later. But now listen to me. Faith calls things that be not as though they were. And here's the way you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. If, these are the words of Jesus, these are in red. These are red words, red words when. This is a blood covenant back statement. Are you hearing me now? This is a blood covenant back statement. If you then, being natural, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? To who? Them that ask. To them that feel something or other. Didn't mention anything about feeling. To, to, to some sort of ecstasy. And there were people back in the early days of Pentecost right here in the United States, that people that, I, well, anywhere in the world, but, but I, I mean, uh, Brother Hagin uh, talked about this and taught about it because in, when he received the Holy Spirit in 1937, <clears throat> the year after I was born, I, I mean, come on. They, he said, we didn't know anything. He just like, he's just like I was in Henderson, Texas, when I went over there at that meeting. He didn't know anything. And he said, we thought we had to pray in English until we prayed ourselves into some sort of ecstasy, and then we could speak with other tongues. Well, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But notice this right here. Your heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to those that ask Him. Now, if you're born again, born again comes first. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, do it right now. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. I believe with all my heart that, that uh, you've been raised from the dead, and I confess you as Lord, and the Scripture says I shall be saved, so I am saved. Glory to God. See, it's the same, same process. You believe it in your heart, you say it with your mouth. How do you, why do you believe it in your heart? Because you feel it? No, because the Word says it, because it's backed by blood covenant. Well, you know, Brother Copeland, I just felt like the Lord heard me. Now, somebody says, says that. You can 
Just write it down. They are in for a fall. Brother Copeland, why would you say that? Because to change them, all they got to do is feel different. And all, the, all you have to do to feel different is just let the devil punch you a little bit and get you a little depressed. You feel, I just don't feel like God heard me. So you're up one day and down the neck because you only believe what you feel. Well, I don't feel like God's here. Oh, God be with us. Oh, God, oh, God, I don't feel God. Oh, Brother Copeland, I just don't feel God. Hey, he's already promised by covenant, I will never leave you nor forsake you even to the end of the age. You don't have to feel anything to get that. You got a blood contract that states it. You believe the contract, the feelings come later. Amen. Did you get that? The feelings come later. Oh, glory to God, we welcome feelings. But I want feelings based on the Word of God by faith. Because when I don't feel God, when I don't feel good, when I don't feel strong, that's when I need to be believing He's here, believing He's in me, and I declare greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. So you just simply go to the Word. Yes, sir, I see that. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Oh, yeah, I see that. A and I see over here, just as plain as could be, where Jesus himself said, But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You will. Oh, yeah, I believe that, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe that. I sure do. Uh, that, yeah, glory to God. And uh, there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like a fire and set upon all of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak. They were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak. So, yes, amen. Well, Lord Jesus, uh, I see right here where you said, how much more your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask Him. Father, I, I'm here. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And, and, and I see from uh, all, all these different places in, in the New Testament that every time it's mentioned, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Every one of them, every one of them. I see it. Okay. Well, you know. I don't feel anything, but it's not based on feeling. I've got a blood covenant with Jesus, and this is what he said. Father, I'm asking. And by faith, I say with my mouth, because I believe with my heart, in my heart, I'm born again, and I am filled with the Holy Spirit of God because you said if I'd ask, you would give. And I receive him right now in the name of Jesus. I declare by faith I'm born again and I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost and I'm going to open my mouth and, you, and I'm going to speak by faith. Well, I know it'll be the Holy Ghost speaking when I do it. No, he'll, he'll never do it then because I'll tell you right now, they were filled and they began to speak and the Spirit gave them the utterance. Amen. This is a supernatural thing. Well, Brother Copeland, I, uh, I you know, I, I, I don't really see any, any need for that. You mean God has given us something supernatural that you don't need? Boy, you must really be something. Yeah, all I know, I'll tell you what you are. You are ignorant of the Word. I didn't say you're an ignorant man but or woman, but you're ignorant of the Word and what it says. Because when you find out what it says, whoa, whoa, I'm not going another day without this. I'm going over, I'm going over to 1 Corinthians, and I'm going to go to 14th chapter. Oh, glory. Now, you, you, now, now, now listen to me. Amen. 
He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Now, the word unknown there is in italics. This is just indicating that you are speaking in a language that you did not learn. It's not a language coming out of your mental process. It is a language that is supernaturally coming out of your spirit. You are providing the sound and the Spirit of God has given you the words and you're speaking them out. So now, he that speaketh in a tongue edifies himself. Now that, the word edify means to build up. We get our word edifice from it. Now, and the Word of God also says in the, in the book of, of Jude, you build up yourself praying on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Praying in the Holy Spirit. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will, I will pray with my spirit. The Amplified said, I will pray with my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me. I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding. It's an act of your will. You don't have to be in some kind of ecstasy to do this. You just, I will. Oh, Gloria Pista. Oh, I love you, Lord. Oh, I praise you, Lord. You can just step right over in there and you can be praying things that you forgot to pray about, but the Spirit of God will take care of it. And we're out of time. And I'll be back in just a moment. You have a powerhouse of faith in your heart that the world needs you to release. When you turn your faith loose, not only will your life be changed, but everything and everyone you encounter. I want you to understand something about the faith in the heart of a believer. I want you to understand something about the faith of Jesus that's burning in your bosom, burning to be fed, burning to be released. Glory to God, it has a fire in it. It has a fire in it. It has a fire in it. Faith in the Heart of the Believer, a new CD by Kenneth Copeland, will help you receive the answers and outcomes that God promises you in His Word. Go beyond just confessing words into being fully persuaded by faith. Learn how to put faith into operation and help bring the resources, healing, and restoration you need. Be sure to request yours today. Turn your faith loose. Request your free CD by Kenneth Copeland, Faith in the Heart of the Believer. Call 800-600-7395 or visit our website at kcm.org slash TV special. See things change in your life as you tap into the power of God's love, the fuel of faith. Request your free CD today, Faith in the Heart of the Believer. Offer good for 60 days. Now you can see, look, look right, we're back at the, in, in the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, you know, I know when I, when I feel saved here. No, 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 no. Feelings don't have anything to do with it. As that, this is what we have to get completely away from so that when faith moves and the power of God moves, then the feelings and the joy and all that come later, but you don't base anything on them because feelings are fickle, particularly um, when, you, when you're just learning how to live and walk by faith. But e even after that, if you've been doing it for, for, for 50 years, like Gloria and I have, you still, you, boy, you have to watch those feelings. Not just, just, you just, come on, Copeland. You don't tell me how to feel. I tell you how to feel in the name of Jesus. Thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth believes unto righteousness, heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Pray this. If you've never received Jesus as the Lord of your life, you're going to do it right now. Just pray this. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you've been raised from the dead. Come into my heart. I confess you as Lord over my life. 
take my life and do something with it. Glory to God. Yeah, but now, Brother Copeland, now he might not take my life. See, that's a lie from hell. Jesus has already said, back by blood covenant, anyone that comes unto me, I will for no reason cast him out. Isn't that wonderful that he died for the ungodly and you and I qualified? <laughs> Whatever you've done in your life, he's already taken care of us with his blood. For with the heart man believes to righteousness. Oh, Jesus, thank you for taking my life. Thank you for, I, I, I receive your life. And I repent of sin. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. And I give you praise and honor and glory. I just read in your word in the 11th chapter of the book of Luke how much more my heavenly Father would give me the Holy Spirit to, if I ask. Well, Father, I've asked, I'm asking now, and I'm standing on the words of Jesus. I believe I receive when I pray, glory to God, and the confession of my mouth is Right now, by faith, I'm born again, and I'm spirit-filled, and I fully plan to open my mouth right now by faith and speak with the praise language supernatural in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer with me, I want to send you this little book, He Did It All for You. This will help you get started reading your Bible. Glory to God. This, this, this little brochure is so simple, how to study your Bible. You don't need to be struggling with this book like a lot of other, others of us did until we learned how. I'll send it to you free and post paid. Glory to God. See you tomorrow. Jesus is more. Jesus did it all for you. Request your free salvation package today at kcm.org salvation and learn more about your new life in Christ. Let God manifest himself to you and receive all he has for you in the great year.